<laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Lisa Roberts. I'm uh, one of the staff members here with OCP, and um, you'll probably see on your screen that a lot of you have the exact same name. Um, and so uh, if your name is not actually uh, Alexis, um, if you go to the participants um, icon down at the bottom of your screen and click on that, it, a small window will pop up um, and you will find, uh, you can find your name. And if you click the hover over it and You'll see three little dots pop up. If you click that icon, you can then rename yourself. Um, and that is how you should go about uh, giving us your actual name so we know who to call on. Um, and we appreciate uh, you guys bearing with us for this little technical issue we're having here. But we'll get started right at uh, 2.30. Hey, Lisa. I, I was just following your instructions, and when people click on the participants at the bottom, it's just a bunch of Alexis Susies that are listed. It's, there's no way for people to know which Alexis Susie they are. They shouldn't be able to change other people's names. Okay. So, um... The other thing, the way I've done it in the past, is if you just hover over your picture, yeah. the three dots appear in the right-hand corner of that box. That is also a perfect way to do it. Look at you, Vern. Tech master of the day. Oh, low bar. I don't know why my picture doesn't come on. Um, there is a camera icon down at the probably the bottom left hand side of your screen. Um, if you toggle that to on, that may help. And for anybody who just showed up um, and do not have the uh, correct name associated with your uh, photo or your image, uh, if you hover over um, the picture of yourself on the screen and click the button that has three dots, um, down at the bottom of that list, you can um, rename yourself. And if you would actually change your name um, to the one that you use on a daily basis, that would be much appreciated. And again, we'll get started in just a minute, but if you have logged on and um, the incorrect name is showing next to your um, image, if you could turn on your camera and go to uh, your face, <laughs> if you hover over uh, the screen there uh, and click the three small dots uh, icon, uh, you can rename yourself. Uh, and that would be very helpful for folks to do before we get started uh, so we can have an accurate reflection of who's here and know who to call on um, when you ask your questions. That would be great.
and I want to be respectful of people's time, but we'll give people a, a couple more minutes. We still got uh, some faces trickling in. Hey, everybody. It looks like we still have about a dozen Alexis Susies uh, present. Um, so if that is not actually your name, if you could turn on your camera um, and identify your photo or, or a video image and hover over it, um, you will see a, a icon with three small dots on it. If you click that, uh, right in the middle of the drop down list will be an option to rename. If you click on that and then type in your actual name, um, that would be very helpful for us and we will get started uh, in just a minute. All right, everyone, we're gonna get started. Um, as people trickle in, they'll, they'll catch up, I'm sure. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for participating in this call today. There's a good number of you on the call. And as I said, based on our RSVPs, I assume more people are trickling in. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is John Hudak. I'm the director of office, the Office of Cannabis Policy. Um, like I said, for some of you, this might be the first time that you're talking to me. Um, I'm excited to engage with you today and obviously into the future as well. I'd also like to in introduce my colleagues who are on the call today. Uh, Vern Malik is the Deputy Director of Operations at OCP. Uh, Lisa Roberts is the Deputy Director of Strategic Initiatives. John Gagnon is Director of Data Analytics. Uh, Lexi Susi is Director of Media and Stakeholder Relations. And Tracy Jakes is Director of Special Projects. I'd like to talk a little bit about why we're here. Uh, we're here today based on some of the recommendations in the metric user group, uh, sorry, the metric user work group. Uh, as work group members talk through some of the concerns that they had uh, around uh, using metric and metric as a platform uh, for licensees, uh, one of the common refrains that we heard was that there wasn't a direct way for sharing feedback with metric. And so we're aiming to help achieve that through calls like this one. Uh, we've got a lot more work to be done. There's a lot more stakeholder engagement to be done. Um, but the purpose of this call uh, is to provide a Q&A format, to uh, provide a a, a clearinghouse to talk through the challenges, the frustrations, the opportunities, to talk about what is working, what isn't working, uh, where improvements have been made and where uh, places where no improvements have been made. Um, we wanna keep questions um, focused on uh, the user experience with metric software. Uh, we have a limited amount of time. We have a lot of people on the call. Uh, and so we wanna make sure that we stay focused uh, on the goals and the goals uh, of these calls as laid out uh, from the metric user work group. We know we're not metric. Um, and so although we may not be able to answer all of your questions today, we're gonna do our best to do so. Uh, Vern and John in particular are going to run point on a lot of the technical questions, uh, but we're also committed to relaying in writing uh, all of your feedback and concerns to metric and following up with folks um, at metric as appropriate. And also following up with you as appropriate to make sure that your uh, concerns are being heard and to see whether you're seeing the appropriate changes you'd like to see uh, within the system and within the software. 
And moving forward, just as a, um, a heads up, we're going to have uh, we're planning on hosting calls like these quarterly, uh, recognizing that not all of the problems are going to be fixed overnight. Um, but we definitely want to have this ongoing conversation with all of you and to be able to have that conversation with metric as well. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, expectations, about some housekeeping, about some Zoom functionality. Uh, before we segue into the meeting, uh, I want to note uh, that the meeting is being recorded and that this video will be shared after the meeting on OCP's YouTube page. Uh, so please know that anything you shared here um, will be public. Uh, and I also encourage you, I'm sure you have colleagues um, uh, and, and friends and others uh, who wanted to make this call but weren't able to, whether it's because of weather or schedule or what have you. Uh, so once it posts on the YouTube page, please feel free to share uh, this and let them know that we are going to have calls uh, quarterly moving forward. As I noted, we have a lot of people on the call today and we wanna get to as many questions as possible. Uh, so we kindly ask that you use the raise the hand function to get into the queue to ask a question. We'll go in order of the participant list uh, as people raise their hands. Uh, stay on mute until it's your turn to ask a question um, and introduce yourself before uh, you ask your question. We're having some trouble with names today, and so it'll be helpful for us to be able to follow up with people if you do introduce yourself, your name, um, and the company that, that you work for as well. Um, please keep your questions uh, to about three minutes. As I noted, there's a lot of people on the call in a limited time, and we want to make sure um, that uh, we're respectful of your time and, and you're respectful of everyone else's time. We don't want a lot of uh, conversation, monopolization, or filibustering because we want to get to as many people as possible. Uh, and once you're done asking your question, uh, remember to turn off your raise hand feature uh, so that when you're done, we know that you're out of the queue. It's important that we keep things respectful. There's plenty of passion in this industry, which is what's helping it succeed. Um, but please keep comments and questions, as I said, uh, focused on metric, but also uh, your comments and questions with respect to each other. Um, after the meeting, we're going to be circulating a survey to all the participants uh, to see, uh, to hear your feedback and to see what we did well and what we didn't do well today. Uh, and so we can strengthen this in upcoming calls, as I noted, that will be quarterly. Before we jump into your concerns, um, a lot of you uh, emailed in advance uh, some of the questions that you had, and we really appreciate those. There were a variety of questions that were sent in on numerous topics, uh, but one of the uh, frequent ones that popped up involved batch tracking. And so uh, I wanted to take a moment to discuss this. I'm sure it's going to come up uh, in our conversation in the Q&A today, uh, but I definitely wanted to lead off with that given uh, the number of questions that we did uh, have uh, come in. Uh, for those of you who didn't see it, OCP released two guidance documents yesterday. Um, one was an update to ongoing contract negotiations um, around the amendment uh, to implement and build out the software for batch tracking. I want to start first by saying that I understand and appreciate that there's a lot of disappointment within industry that batch tracking isn't off the ground. Uh, and I want to tell you genuinely that I share that frustration. Um, the legislature passed um, a law uh, allowing for batch tracking last year, uh, and the negotiations didn't proceed at the pace that I think any of us would have wanted. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, I've been in this role for eight weeks, um, and this has been a, a primary priority for me. Uh, and as the, one of the guidance documents that we issued yesterday notes, um, we've come to broad agreement with Metric uh, on what batch tracking, what the batch tracking system will look like, how, and, and we're in, currently uh, working on uh, the final details on what that build out will be. Uh, once that contract is signed, we're going to be able to uh, discuss uh, broadly. Uh, what the system will look like, what the functionality will look like, and most importantly, what the timeline will, will look like uh, for that software launch. The other document, uh, the other guidance document uh, that was released yesterday uh, involved uh, another priority of mine, and, and that was, I uh, mentioned this before the legislature and elsewhere, that I'm interested in uh, uh, conducting regulatory look back uh, at OCP to try to identify where there's um, overburdensome regulations, duplicative ever, uh, regulations, and unnecessary ones. And uh, while this is not the last step in that process, it is the first step in that process. So we've released uh, guidance in three areas, um, uh, generally around uh, a weighing uh, product and waste, uh, in order to try to streamline what licensees uh, are facing each day. Uh, some of the benefits uh, in, in those uh, changes uh, are ones that we'll see in the future uh, through batch tracking. And so uh, we worked hard internally with our compliance team to make sure that these 
uh, preliminary measures were ones that we were comfortable um, would streamline the process for license ease and would fit nicely into batch tracking uh, in the future. Uh, for those of you who, like I said, did not see uh, the document or did not get it in your email, it is available uh, on the OCP website. Uh, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, I'm excited to uh, hear from all of you. Uh, as I said, uh, this is going to be an ongoing conversation. We're going to try to answer the questions that you have today. Uh, and for the ones that we can't, we're happy to pass them along uh, and follow up on that, uh, on those questions. So if you guys could all start uh, raising hands, I see uh, Annie Matney um, has her hand first. Um, happy to get to you all in order. Annie? Hi. Um, so my question was relating to uh, receiving transfers from either a GR license or a manufacturing license to retail. Uh, so um, I'm with Kind & Co. And what we have been experiencing as an issue with our metric is that um, when we create, say, a case of packaged flour, um, you know, it's pretty common practice to not weigh like say it's a case of eighths, pretty common practice to not weigh those eighths to like 3.5000. And, um, you know, the guidance does allow for variants of um, 0.1 grams below and half gram above that, uh, that net weight. And so what we're experiencing as an issue is when we will create, um, let's say a case of 64 eighths that weighs about uh, 230 grams for an example. Um, I think that averages out to about 3.6 per eighth. Um, the issue we're experiencing is when you go to receive that package on the retail side, that um, you end up with not being able to receive the full weight and that excess weight um, that is like excess from the, the true calculated net weight, I suppose, um, is just kind of like you're either having to adjust the package or adjust it for moisture loss or waste or something like that. So what I viewed as a solution um, and as potentially being able to be implemented would be to allow for flour to be entered, particularly flour child packages to be entered as units. So when I go from my source package of flour and create a child package of packaged flour to be able to enter that as say 64 units rather than 230 grams. And as of now, flour can't be entered as units at all. And I think that would be really useful, especially for transferring from like manufacturing or grow to retail. Annie, thank you, the, uh, thank you for that. Um, and also thank you for the proposed solution. Uh, one of the things I found most uh, encouraging about the metric user work group uh, were that a lot of people were proposing solutions and, and not just uh, putting the concerns out there. Uh, I recognize that uh, for some of the questions and some of the concerns, uh, you might not have proposed solutions and that's completely fine. Uh, but if you do have some ideas like that, um, uh, th we're, we're all ears and, and those are gonna really be helpful in terms of uh, working through uh, to something we can uh, hopefully change. Uh, John, I wanted to give you a quick second in, in case you had a follow-up there. John Gagnon. Um, yeah, I, I definitely understand the, the question um, and thank you for the question. Um, you're absolutely right at, at the moment, um, the way metric is configured in Maine, um, it is just weight-based for flour. And uh, I do remember the very early days working with metric and going back and forth about how we have things configured in Maine. Um, it was a conscious decision to do that in Maine. And that was largely based on the advice that we received from Metric about how this is handled in other jurisdictions. Um, it might be worth revisiting. Um, you know, certainly every jurisdiction is different. Um, some states let you do things called deli style, where there is an opportunity for over and under po uh, polls. That's not the case for adult use in Maine. Um, you know, certainly for, for adult use, everything is prepackaged. It might be something that, that's worth um, revisiting right now. Um, have you, uh, I think some of this might be able to be addressed by uh, if you're using a third party vendor, um, their API and, and how they're tracking things. Have, I'm curious if you've had any communication um, 
if you're using an API vendor and if you've had any communication with that vendor about this issue? Um, so for our POS, I suppose that would be the third party, right. um, mm -hmm. which is Dutchie. Um, yeah. And yeah, when you enter the SKU into Dutchie for like an eighth, for example, you have to enter that, um, that weight for the SKU. And I guess where the issue comes in is like every time you'd receive a new package of eighths, you'd have to change that amount in the SKU to be able to receive the full package. Okay. All right. Well, um, rather than doing troubleshooting on this call with everyone's time, if you'd like to go ahead and forward me that email, so it's john.r.gagnon at main.gov. If you have an existing metric support ticket with them, or you just have a conversation, go ahead and forward it to me and let me take a look at, at some of the details and maybe we can come up with uh, something else that we can look at. But but you are correct. At this point, it is weight only uh, for flower and metric in Maine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I'll definitely be sending you that email. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Helena, then Joel, then Justice. All right. Am I unmuted? Everything works? Okay. All right. Good. Um, so I have a few. I'll just get to one just to start. Um, Helena, it is you just that... introduce, could you just introduce yourself quick? Oh, uh, yes. My name is Helena and I work for Coastal Roots. Cool. All right. So... Okay, so when we are creating um, and bucking things down and putting them into buckets, um, we have found that when you create that SKU to put on your package and send it through, put it strain its weight, um, if you put the wrong name on that it, with the wrong strain in the computer, there's really no room for error. If that happens, it's basically useless because then you can't create it into another batch and um, sell it. So. That's that's one. I can go on with a few more if you'd like to yeah, just to start. Why don't you, or... why don't you cl cluster the questions and then we'll um, we'll respond to them as a group if that works. Okay, cool. Um, another question is for the manifest. Um, we've seen a few different ways that they come in. As far as direction wise, is 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 it preferable to have step by step, or can you just have the GPS main location or just the address itself right on the manifest or and another uh, question I had is for a plant in general, um, can you just, it, it, I just think it would be easier if when you clicked on a plant and you wanted its history, if you had all of its history in one, not separated from active and inactive because looking forward and trying to find any mistakes can get really difficult and complicated when you're looking for all these different numbers from all these different places. Um, another question I have is for more for the packaging division. Um, there's not a lot of room for error as far as if you send it in and click the wrong weight in grams, if you then go try to go back in and fix that, it'll let you fix it, but it won't adjust your package weight that you had originally taken it from. Um, and... Yeah, my, my other follow-up question was more about, uh, oh, and creating clones. If you try and create clones as well now, um, maybe scratch that one. Uh, skip to the, uh, I was gonna ask about the metric tags moving forward um, and just a little bit on how that would play out if you had one metric tag for a whole room of say 800 plants. And that's kind of most of my questions right there. Okay, um, Helena, uh, I'll, I'll respond to two items first. I'll kick it to John for uh, some of the others. Uh, in terms of the metric tags, when, uh, as I had noted um, earlier, when uh, uh, when the contract negotiations are, are finalized and it's gone through pr uh, state procurement review, um, we're going to um, issue another guidance document that provides all of the details um, of the program. Uh, and, uh, and then there will also be follow-up um, uh, uh, notices from metric about user functionality and things like that um, as it moves forward. 
a, okay. a few of your a few of your questions hit on um, uh, a, a sort of common theme, and that is if you essentially mark something wrong within the system, the ability to correct that error is quite limited depending on where you're doing that. Um, this is an issue that, that I've raised with metric um, as a, a complete time waste uh, for all of you. Um, it's something that uh, can create unnecessary administrative holds um, and the idea that you just have one shot to get it right um, uh, is, is, is unfair, especially given there are things that metric doesn't get right on one shot. And so uh, this is something we're continuing to have an ongoing conversation with them. Um, I've jotted down the specific areas that you've mentioned here. I have a running list from uh, hearing from other licensees about these areas. It creates more work for you. It slows down your production um, in business processes. It creates more work for us. It's the last thing that we want of uh, these um, unnecessary holds. And so um, I'll definitely continue that conversation and bring some of these specific concerns um, that you mentioned to them as well. Uh, John, I want to give you a quick second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was jotting this down as quickly as I can, uh, but it was kind of like music bingo. I was kind of all over the, the map there with there. Uh, so one thing that I caught the uh, the question about the manifest, it sounded like you were talking about the directions, how, how much detail you need in the directions piece. Uh, I, I think that might be a conversation um, you'd want to have with your field investigator. So on the compliance side of things, um, metric uh, kind of has that section that's kind of free form in there. I think that's really a question for uh, compliance. So maybe we save that for a different group. That's not necessarily anything that metric itself validates. Did I understand that part of the question correctly? Is that what you were talking about? The uh, the section where you're filling in the directions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's a conversation yeah, like with your field investigator. Yeah. Got field investigator. Okay. Yeah, to see what, what level of detail they're comfortable with there. Um, there isn't anything in metric that's that's validating uh, that level of granularity. I can uh, probably answer that, John. Yep, fire yeah, waver. Yep. It to, to a field of us here. So we don't need turn-by-turn -turn directions on there. Um, we're don't, not really worried about directions at all. For us, if you, you know, if you're going from, you know, Augusta to Gardner, just say Augusta to Gardner. We don't really care about that. If you're going from Augusta to Gardner and you get stopped by the police and you're in York, we're going to scratch our heads and say, how did you wind up in York? You know, you're about 100 miles off base. So I wouldn't spend a lot of detail of the time working on that. Okay. And is it just a direct, is the address okay? Just like the straight address of where you're going? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Look at that. One down. Um, <laughs> I I heard you about the uh, the active versus inactive. I think you were talking about plants at the time. I've run into the same thing with uh, with packages. Y yeah, that's yeah. that's frustrating. I've I've run into the same thing when I'm doing my own research when I can't find something and then I have to. Oh yeah, let me take a look at the inactive tag and there it is. Um, yeah, I share that that frustration. I think that that would be kind of a challenge for metric behind the scenes to lump them together. Um, I, you know, I, I've never seen the internals of metric, but I think that that's kind of one of the pieces, how they break up where things are put together. So, yeah, I definitely understand that it kind of breaks the chain for you, but I think that that might be a big ask for them to, to lump it together, but it's definitely something to, uh, to keep in mind. And uh, it might be something we have a conversation with them in the future on. Um, okay. Your first question you lost me a little bit on when you were talking about um, buckets and strains. Were you talking about when you're back at the original harvest? Can you can you repeat that part for me real quick? Yeah, of course. Uh, I was trying to go quick just in case so I can get them all yeah. in. Uh, so when we uh, take the plants down and we start bucking them and yeah. then running them through the churner, it's what I call it. And then you weigh, you put them into buckets and get your weights in maybe a thousand grams or 800 grams or whatnot. And when you're adding those into metric, if you accidentally, if it's Blue Widow, but you put it in as wedding cake and sent it through, that bucket is now in the computer as wedding cake. And you can't, if you go to change that, um, it's something you, it messes up 
putting it in with the other batches because it's now incorrect and says it's a different strain. So now you are unable to wholesale it and mix it with other products you would have wholesaled because it's going to have that incorrect strain name in its in its batch history. Okay, we might need to follow up separately. I think we're in a scenario where you you discontinue the the harvest batch and recreate it, but I don't want to jump to a conclusion if we're running okay. through it this quickly. Feel free to reach out to me separately. We can uh, okay. we can talk our way through it. But it sounds like yep. that's something that you should be able to fix. Might be a little bit painful, um, but okay. probably something we can talk through offline if you want. Okay. Okay. Very good. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I did have one about uh, the problem we have about uh, sending, if we send, go to send over and create something and send it to the store and say we hit 28 grams instead of 280, we can go back and fix it and change it to the 280, but metric right. doesn't follow through and adjust that path. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the other thing that can mess up because we have all these different numbers that aren't correct in our bins, but says one thing in the computer, one thing over here, trying to, you know. Yeah, it is frustrating. I think metric short answer would be that they don't want one licensee's adjustments to impact yeah. another licensee's inventory. So it's kind of a safety check for them. But I understand that it just seems like it's extra work and yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's that would be their answer. They don't want one licensee's corrections to impact another licensee's inventory. Well, we'll, we'll definitely bring that okay. to them, Helena. Um, next, I've got Joel and Matt. Although Justice, you were in line. I'm not sure if you put your hand down by accident or not. But uh, if you want to put it up again, if you do have a question. But Joel, you're up next. Hey, everybody, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, everyone. Uh, Joel Pepin, Jar Cannabis Company. Um, so my, my comments and questions here are around the batch tagging. Um, there's been several mixed signals that we, as the industry have received from OCP about the updates on these contract negotiations, um, going, uh, in my case, as far back as early November of last year. So we're going on our fourth month of pending contract negotiations. So verbally, I hear um, you say, Director Hudak, that this is of importance, but from our perspective, this law was passed more than a half a year ago, it became law more than a half a year ago. And we're still sitting here spending tens of thousands of dollars on plant tags, spending way more than that on labor and resources to get these plants tagged. Um, and we're frustrated. Uh, we all work hard day in and day out to be compliant with the program, every single one of us on this call. And there's a state law that you as an office um, aren't abiding by because of a third party vendor that we're contracted with, the program's contracted with. So first, I just wanted to state all that information. First, how much longer do we expect the negotiations to last? Are we 50% so, are we done? Are we 99% done? Yeah, we're, we're main, uh, well, well, let me start first, Joel, by um, saying I appreciate uh, the frustration, the anger, um, uh, that the delays are, are irritating you guys. I, I get it. Um, uh, and that you've been hearing this for months from OCP um, it is unfortunate. What I will say in terms of the, uh, uh, the current update, we are, we are far more than 50% of the way there. We are uh, working on the final details of uh, what the build out looks like. Um, it then needs to go through the contract, uh, I'm sorry, the procurement review process under the law. Uh, and so we are working as quickly as possible. Um, it's a two-way street. Um, we're communicating uh, uh, rapidly to the uh, parts of the contract negotiation that come in from metric and turning it around uh, within a day or two. Uh, and so we had a productive calls on the build out uh, late last week. Uh, and so I'm confident that, uh, you know, we are not looking at months um, to go. Uh, we're looking at a much, a much shorter time frame. So, I mean, the way that I read the guidance document last night is we're still in negotiations. So the negotiations, the contract aren't complete. And then once they are, then the ball's in metrics court to modify software, right? Before you ultimately as an office have guidance for us as licensees. To me, I would imagine that's gonna take them several months to do. I yeah, the c the cell tracking system is a software and software buildouts are going to take time. I'm not going to, um, suggest otherwise. And so 
uh, we are uh, we have made it clear to metric uh, that this is something that the industry has been waiting a long time for. Uh, and they're dragging their feet is going to be unacceptable to this office. It's going to be unacceptable to the commissioner. I'm um, certainly all of you and obviously to the legislature as well. Um, we have made that point repeatedly, um, but it is it is ultimately a software build out. Just to give you a little bit of perspective for my uh, from my business, since this batch tagging became law last summer, my business, we're a tier three, we're a smaller tier three cultivator, though we're certainly not one of the largest. We spent over $10,000 in plant tags and stakes since this became law. So multiply that out by all the cultivation licensees. Um, also wanted to uh, get, provide the information that for our small tier three cultivation license, we produce every 21 days, 15 pounds of waste with these plant tags. So then we could easily extrapolate that out for the rest of the industry. So. These are some of the reasons, and then not to mention all the time that it takes every single uh, transplant to tag all these plants. So why, let me ask this, why can't we simply, why can't we simply in metric have one tag per strain per harvest batch without any software updates and just report all of the waste like we currently do? The system isn't built to function in that way. Um, and so in order to maintain our obligation under the law um, to maintain um, uh, inventory tracking, that is not something that is funct uh, capable functionally within metric right now. And so we do have competing uh, laws here. Uh, one that is telling us that we need to maintain um, a, a compliance system uh, that, that ensures that uh, it is closed loop and another that is asking us to do something uh, with an external vendor that they are not ready to do uh, technologically yet. That's why we have the software build out coming. Roger that. So, I mean, again, I, I do remember when, uh, if I recall correctly, when the state was looking at um, engaging with Metric as their third party vendor for the tracking system, Metric does advertise itself as a company who can build software specific um, solutions tailored to the market that they're in. So I just, I haven't forgot about that. And that's the way that it was sold to the state of Maine and to all of yep. us. But so we, so we couldn't, just to clarify, if, if we had, let's say a hundred OG Kush in one room, I couldn't put one tag for the hundred OG Kush and in the description say, OG Kush, 100 plants, tag 001. That is correct. Okay. Um, I guess the only other thing that I wanted to comment on specific to the plant tagging is uh, as licensees, when we do need to order plant tags, there's no way to separate out the stakes that come with them. The stakes are made to be used, I believe, up to three times, three or four times. And metric charges you and makes you buy stakes at a one to one ratio as the tags. So that's a complete waste of resources as well. So I just wanted to state that in case you guys didn't know. I appreciate that, Joel. It's something I'll, I'll definitely raise with them. Um, uh, obviously, batch tracking will will reduce that significantly. But um, uh, in terms of the stakes, yeah, that does seem like a waste uh, to me uh, if the stakes are reusable and the tags are not. So uh, I'm happy to, to follow up with them and I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I haven't seen Justice's hand go up uh, again. So Matt, you're up. Hey there, can you hear me? Yep. Thanks, Director Hudak. Good afternoon to Vern and Lisa and everyone else there at OCP, John. So to follow up on uh, the bill that we got passed last year, um, and Director Hudak, you might wanna go back and watch some tape because the original bill also included package tagging. And I think you should, you might want to go back and pull up the VLA tape from the work session because we as an industry dropped the package tagging component of that law in good faith to be circled back to this year. And here we are still talking about batch tagging plants. Here you folks are still negotiating a contract with metric. We don't have a clear fix anywhere down the line. So I think it's due time to start talking about package tags again. Scott Howard, who's a member of Maine Cannabis Industry Association, had great testimony about how wasteful 
package tagging is, especially for manufacturers and or distributors and how wasteful that is. And so if we're going to be doing this whole dance again with package tags, which was promised to us by regulators last session, and we dropped that as a concession to streamline and prioritize batch tag of plants, um, I want to bring that back up in the conversation because that got lost in the shuffle. And I don't think we have the patience or time, neither OCP or our stakeholders to go through another contract negotiation and tech build out for that. No, I appreciate that, Matt. Um, uh, and I, I have gone back and, and watched uh, the hearings around that, um, taken up a, a, a lot of time, but uh, worthwhile time to get myself up to speed. Uh, and I, again, I, I share your frustration. There's nothing I can say to you guys that is going to make you not frustrated. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I can keep repeating myself, but if I were in your shoes, I'd be angry too. Um, if I were in Stop. your shoes and I was throwing, throwing money at this, um, uh, I, I would be angry too. We are on as fast of a track as I can get us um, right now uh, to the solution, but it doesn't make up for the fact that there's been this huge delay uh, in the past sure, year. I, I, I understand that. That's not the intent of my question. The, the, if, if you're familiar with what transpired last session, is package tags a part of the, the rebuild, a metric, or are we just talking about, or are we just completely forgetting that now and sweeping it under the rug and just talking about that tagging plants? No, th uh, thanks for that clarification, Matt. Yeah, this is a comprehensive, um, uh, this is intended as a comprehensive solution. The last thing that OCP wants is to go back into another contract negotiation um, uh, with metric again over this. Um, the last thing I want um, for all of you is to keep dragging this process out. So this is intended as a comprehensive solution. Okay. And then the last part of the question is what's plan B? What's plan B when metric just drags their fee and doesn't, doesn't materialize any of this tech build out? So I'm, uh, I am confident where we are at, Matt, that we are um, going to get this solution um, provided. Uh, okay. The conversations I've had uh, in the past eight weeks with metric um, have been in good faith um, uh, on their part. Uh, having, having watched the testimony that you had recommended, I watch and I'm um, having been briefed by staff about uh, what the process has been like. Um, I was a bit concerned uh, about what this, how this was going to play out. Um, I feel good about where, uh, where we're at. Um, uh, and frankly, if I'm not, hold my ass to account for it. Um, uh, if I'm completely wrong on this, oh, we will. Oh, I know you will. In in right, <laughs> you'll be screaming at me. Um, no, uh, we won't. We won't. We we have compassion for the situation we're in. But what what is the what is the over under? What you know, you got the contract negotiations settled. Let's not even say when do we expect the tech build out because that's dependent on contract ending. So contract ends at X date. What's Y date when you say, okay, metric, you're full of it and we're done with you. What, what's, what's the amount of months or years after the contract's done that we get to that part of the story? So metric is going to provide us a, a specific um, range of time in which, uh, in which a build out happens. We are going to hold them to account for it. The, our procurement officers are not going to approve um, a contract uh, that they feel is not um, uh, able to be uh, built out. And I will be on the phone with them every day, uh, lighting them up. Uh, I think we have to think uh, seriously about what types of uh, uh, responses we can have if we have a, a vendor who is not fulfilling their obligations. Um, I think that is true with metric. I think that's true with any vendor in state government. Um, uh, if they are going to drag their feet, um, uh, then we need to think about how we respond to that. And so I think that's a, a, com a conversation that we have uh, within the uh, department, uh, with the governor's office, with the legislature, and certainly with stakeholders. But uh, I have made it clear to metric multiple times uh, that foot dragging is really unacceptable. And I've made uh, the point, uh, and I'll continue to make the point that, that Joel made earlier about um, the costs and the, the amount of uh, 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 physical weight in, in wasted tags. Um, I've made the point to them that this delay has cost our licensees significant amounts of labor costs. And and time costs. And uh, so I believe I've made it clear that this is a serious situation um, and that their delays mean money. They mean significant money for the industry. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Um,
All right, uh, Mr. Kerensky, because I know I'm gonna slaughter your first name. Hi, I have uh, two questions. Um, we're aware that we can do trade samples to our employees in small amounts. And when we set up the package to give them a sample, um, the amount isn't subtracted. We don't know how to transfer it out of the building, basically. Our guess is that we would just adjust the package and put a note in. But there's no transfer manuscript associated with a trade sample. Like John? that? Yeah, I believe there's a, a guidance document on our website you can take a look at. Uh, uh, I don't want to quote it from memory. Uh, if you take a look at our published guidance documents, I believe it's recorded as an R&D sample. There's instructions about what needs to be recorded in there. Uh, it, okay, it is a yeah. package adjustment. So take a peek at the guidance document section of our website. And if you still have okay. follow up questions, you can reach out to the compliance team. Um, they'll get you get you the actual guidance on that. OK, thank you. And uh, second question, it's our understanding that we're not able to retest for THC content. Is that true? And if so, is there a way that we can try to work on that? We are finding that the uh, percentage of THC seems to be the biggest driver for retail sales, regardless of our attempts to educate the public. Um, and we there is a range. So when we report in metric, they allow for a two-year average in the reporting but we're just wondering if that's possible on the retail side. Uh, John, do you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, definitely testing is is not my subject matter that I'm an expert in, uh, but my understanding is we do not allow for retesting for potency. You would want to take a look at our rule uh, regarding retesting for any test that has passed uh, to get specifics around there. Uh, it's a it's a policy decision, so it's not really a metric specific question. Um, so I don't think I'd want to go into too much more detail there. Uh, but yeah, uh, retesting for potency is a a no go right now. Okay, thank you, and I appreciate you all being here. This is very informative. Thank you for your questions, uh, Ryan. Uh, you are up. I, uh, Anyone else? Make sure you raise your hands and uh, uh, line up in the queue. Go ahead, Ryan. Yep, Ryan Parker from Stoner & Co. Um, I just wanted to uh, kind of double back on what Joel and um, Matt were mentioning about batch tagging and how frustrating it is that that hasn't been implemented yet. And I was just wondering if the office has thought about any sort of reimbursement for the tags that we've been buying since the law has gone into effect, it'd be pretty easy for us to figure out how many we've used versus how many we've actually needed. Um, and then also, um, do we have an idea as to if those batch tags are gonna cost more than the current tags now, or will they be the same price per tag? Thank you. Uh, Ryan, thanks for your question. Yeah, we. Um... Uh, we, we're not uh, taught having a conversation about reimbursements um, uh, 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 around this. What I will say uh, re regarding your second question um, is that the guidance that we're going to put out when this is uh, uh, when the contract is wrapped up will provide all of the information uh, in there. We're not uh, uh, under state procurement uh, rules, and and that's true in Maine and elsewhere. Uh, we don't talk about the details of ongoing contract negotiations, but all that information will be uh, revealed. My goal is to make sure um, that this does not have um, a revenue impact uh, on industry. If anything, uh, the goal obviously is to save through uh, labor costs. Um, that has been my goal in the negotiations all along. I mean, the you know, pretty much everybody here as a business owner works for a business is how to use a third party software. So you know, it kind of seems like metric is not really a software program and more of just a, a tag selling company. 
Um, are they, you know, is this something we're taking in mind with these negotiations or is it just, you know, I'm just, I'm just worried as a, as a, as a purchasing manager that we're going to be spending just as much or more on these tags. It might make it easier, but the labor is the only savings we'll get. So Ryan, I appreciate that. What uh, metric is um, a software uh, uh, tool. Uh, it's a software tool to help regulators um, understand uh, inventory tracking within the state. Um, that costs money, obviously. There's monthly fees, there's fees that um, the state pays and there's tagging fees uh, that go into that. Our goal uh, in this is to use that software and the software is extensive uh, to make sure that we have the closed loop system that we're required to have under um, statute. Uh, and uh, that will continue under batch tracking. All right, thank you. Okay, um, Annie uh, asked a question already and I wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to ask first, although not seeing any other hands. Uh, Annie, go ahead. Um. So I guess I'm just getting more of an understanding of the batch tracking uh, issue here. And what the thought that keeps coming to my mind about it is, and Joel had mentioned this as well about, um, you know, why can't he create one tag and put into that tag a hundred plants and label it in the notes and everything. Um, to me, that is no different than what we're doing with post-harvest tagging, where we're making a bulk harvest batch under one tag. And, you know, the guidance that came out just, just today about photocopying those tags and placing it on the multiple storage bins, to me, that is uh, almost exactly the same thing as creating one tag with 100 plants underneath it. Um, so I guess I just wanted your thoughts on that? Um, Annie, so uh, the system uh, in its current state is not designed to allow for that. Um, and so it would limit the ability of our compliance division to maintain the closed loop system. Uh, and so the, the system as designed and the rules that are currently in place requires the individual tagging and that will continue until batch tracking is in place. All right. All right, I understand. Thank you. Um, okay, Wayne, you're up next. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Wayne Collins. I work with Harley Canico. Uh, everybody hear me? I think I'm unmuted there. All right, so um, in the, the metric in the finalizing sales uh, tab, if you go into finalize sales and you set it up to uh, the maximum 500 per row, uh, it won't let you finalize 500 sales at a time. Uh, I've, the most I've ever got was somewhere around 130, uh, but any amount higher than 130, the system seems to glitch out and have an error and then it, it doesn't finalize. So uh, the most I can do is 100 at a time. Uh, that seems like a technical glitch we might be able to mention to them and possibly get patched. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. Okay, does anyone else have questions? Please uh, raise your hand on the chat function. I have a question actually on the from the OCP side, John. Yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Hey everybody, this is Vern Malik. I'm the Deputy Director of Operations. I was I was taking notes and maybe I missed it. I wasn't paying enough attention, but uh, back to a question that I think Matt Bayless asked. Matt, are you still listening? Thanks, Matt. There he is. Okay. Oh, there um, is. Matt, did I hear you correctly? Were you asking if one of the things we're working with metric and negotiating now is around uh, tagging of, um, let me see, I wrote it down here. If we're working on the tagging of, if we're working on the for manufacturing, batch tracking, batch tagging, 
packages? Is, is, was that your question? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I'm driving down 295 at this point <laughs> in a snowstorm. But no, I was when we were in session last year, we were talking about package tax too and how cumbersome it is for someone like Seaweed, who's a manufacturing license. They spend like two or three hours printing out reels of package tax to transact when just like plants, packages that are all going to one place can be put under one tag. And during the work session, as a concession, we agreed to table that until this year. Um, and that's kind of been swept under the rug. Like, I, I just remembered it a couple of weeks ago. And, um, we're, you know, so if we're doing the contract negotiations now, um, is that part, are you guys revamping that as well as and not just the plant tax? Oh, God, yes, Matt, I, I did not understand your question before, Matt. Sorry about that, Fern. I interrupted no, you. No, I was, I was just going to clarify that I, I, I don't think we understood your question because that's not part of our metric negotiations at this juncture. Um, yeah, so, so and, that's, sorry to interrupt, but that's my concern is that, you know, we, we, that was part of the bill last year and we dropped that part as a concession so we could streamline and prioritize the batch taggings of plants. So now my concern is before you, if we're never, I don't think you guys ever want to fire up another contract negotiation with these guys again. So, and, and we're going to keep coming back with fixes. So let's measure twice and cut once here because we need, we need not just the plant tags sorted out. We need the package tags sorted out. Yeah, and, so that was, and if you look back at the work session, that was agreed upon by, by then director Gunderson that we would get to that. Yeah. So, I think that from our perspective, we have a lot of concerns. We had them last year during the, uh, the session when this bill was passed around the idea that we would lose total um, inventory control if we went to batch tracking and in product tags. Um, that we, we essentially wouldn't know what the inventory was like, um, you know, if you if we didn't have more granularity at that level. So I, I think we'll probably have to agree to disagree about the, the status of those meetings last year and what the intent was. I fully respect that, you know, MCIA and you folks will, will continue to bring concerns like this forward to the legislature and to us. We appreciate that. But we don't, we don't see this as being something that we can really uh, tackle through metric at this juncture. So just want to be clear about that. So we're setting, you know, accurate expectations. And the other thing I wanted to just kind of throw out there too is, um, you know, Joel mentioned it, and I know you were in the same meeting, Matt, where last fall, I, I indicated to you guys that we were really close and that I thought we'd have a resolution by the end of 2022 on this. And I just want to apologize for that. Um, the information I gave you at the time was accurate. Um, but uh, negotiations did not proceed the way that uh, we thought they would. And uh, I'm gonna take a good chunk of the responsibility for that. Um, some of the stuff that, uh, that we were looking at just wasn't gonna fly through the procurement process with the state. So uh, I just wanted everybody to know, appreciate the frustration. And um, I don't want you to feel like you had the wool pulled over your eyes here. Um, you know, what I told you was the truth at the time. It's just it didn't pan out that way, uh, which is unfortunate. But wanted to throw that in there too. And since I've been talking, I see there's like three more hands up, so we probably ought to turn it back over to John. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, ben Samuelson, you're up next. Matt, drive safely. Um, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Cool. My name is Ben Samuelson. Um, my wife and I run Seed and Soil. We are a nursery and tier four outdoor cultivation. <clears throat> we are the only, I think, the only nursery that grows plantlets from seed and then sells those seeds to, um, you know, people, which is cool. But being the only license like that, we've run into some things that even surprised me with how metric handles these licenses we weren't able to make a harvest of our seed from the nursery license. 
like point blank. They didn't have the item categories in their system uh, to allow that action, which is of course supposed to happen. And they just hadn't noticed that you couldn't harvest seeds by the each um, directly off of a plant. It got resolved, but my, my point in mentioning it is that even though we're a, a small license and the only license like us, if metric doesn't walk through the actual use of its software for every license type, then it puts it on us, the user, to be like, oh man, I can't actually make a harvest. Um, and then they address it in post. So with this new batch tracking coming through, it's really important to me that they, you know, actually use the software through an entire use case. Like let's let's make sure that once I have a, a tagged batch, I can then package those batch of batches of plants for sale because I can't sell a plant. I have to sell a package at retail. So um, yeah, I got, I, you know, I think that's my whole question. It's not really a question, is it? Um, it's no, it's feedback. fine. It's a, good, it's a concern, yeah. Ben. Cool. No, so, and I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, if you, uh, what would be great is if you could reach out um, uh, to our communications director, if you could sort of put into writing a little bit more about the um, experience you had and the concern about what your experience might be, um, yeah. given that you're a unique licensee in the system. Um, uh, I think it's important to have that. I, I, I think for, for anyone, we're typically thinking about what we traditionally run into, but when you have unique licensees, sometimes it's, it's hard for us, um, certainly for metric, um, to try to wrap our heads around what you might face. And so it'd be great to have that in writing. So. Uh, I can wrap my head around exactly what your concerns are and what you might be facing. Sure. Who's the communications director? Is that Tracy? Lexi. Well, yeah, yeah. I've been in touch. Cool. Yes, I Ben. So it's alexis.suci at main.gov. But I Alex believe we've been in touch. So. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. That's perfect. right. Yeah, I'll send you that over. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, th no, this, this is kind of a metric thing. In the, in the nursery, when we harvest plants, is it correct that we can't, we, we're not supposed to be allowed to manifest any of the seed cleaning byproducts down to our cultivation because then we could sell it. The whole point of the nursery is like, there's no THC coming out of it. Um, the reason I'm not clear is that we can push THC containing products into it um, as a way of essentially not paying hundreds of thousands of dollars on excise tax for seed. So we can put flour up the hill to our nursery from our cultivation to clean seed. Um, so is that like, would metric be, is it metric messing up or is it on purpose that that flow of material is one way? Does that make sense? Um, uh, John, where are you? Yeah, I, I'm here. Sorry, sorry, Ben. I'm, I missed part of that. Can you, say what the workflow is one more time so there's two scenarios that might unfold we need seeds in our nursery from our cultivation and mm -hmm. we allow the nursery like we allow that flower to be cleaned into seed in the nursery under that scenario we're able to send flour into the nursery from the cultivation that works and i think it's allowed um but then let's say we take the seed out of that flower and it's usable for distillate, everything that's not a seed, we can't then send that back down to the cultivation. And I think that that's part of statute or part of the idea of what a nursery is. Right. Uh, but I it think, also could be a metric thing. Yeah, Ben, I think we should probably take that offline. I think it's the flower piece. I don't think we contemplated having a nursery have flowers. So I think we need to talk through that separate um so why don't you go ahead i know you got my email why don't you yeah. go ahead hit me up offline we'll we'll talk through it all right thanks okay thanks ben uh joel you're up next and then helena um i just had a quick question if there's been any discussion around changing i believe it's in the rules the current rules that require licensees to maintain the paper copy of transfer manifests. Um, 
Has there been any discussion about allowing licensees not to have to continue to save lots and lots of paper copies and files? Fern, you want to grab that? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, yeah, so Joel, they, they can be scanned and saved electronically. You don't have to save the actual paper copies. Um, and if, if that's not clear, we can make sure we put some communication out around that. But you do have to save the, you know, the copy that's got the signature on it, um, you know, from where it's received. But it's fine to scan those and save them in a scan file. You don't have to have the paper copy. Okay. Does that make I, sense? Yeah, I didn't know about the scanning. That I think that might be helpful for everybody if there was some guidance released to us on the proper way yeah. to do. That. And then, like, yeah. how, it's unclear to me how long we have to maintain those scans or those paper copies. I'll have to double check on that. Um, I just looked at it in Met. It's four years. I, I uh, have to double check to see what it is in AU. Okay. So, uh, just to follow up quickly on that, one of the things Lexi has been doing with uh, our newsletter is to have these um, in case you missed it, in case you missed it um, sections. And one of the things that we want to do is obviously put out guidance um, when guidance is appropriate. Um, but if it's other types of information that people might be not 100% on, um, we're hoping to include that uh, in there. So, so this is an example on scanning. I, I'm happy to put out um, you know, a clearer communication on that. But if there are some of these issues that pop up uh, for, for all of you, not just you, Joel, um, please communicate with our office, um, ask those questions. And um, you know, some of the ones we've had in, the, in case you missed it in the last couple of months have been um, specifically because we've gotten these types of questions for clarity. Uh, about what the rules say, what the law says, what the guidance uh, means, and we're happy to keep including those in the future. Uh, Helena? Hi, um, Helena Coach-Roots. I wasn't sure if I needed to say that again, but might as well. Um, I just had a quick question about, so there's scenarios of like, that we've thought about in future and whatnot as far as like what we can do in metric um and as far as changing everything and adjusting whatever we need when we move plants and change growth bases that's all great but um when it comes down to changing group names if there happened to be a mix-up along the line further on and i wanted to adjust that in the computer um you can't change a group name you can change a strain but it'll still stick with its group name um I just wanted to bring that up because I don't know if that's something they would ever be able to add in there or a, a, a valid enough concern. Um, other things I have are just technical things that I have problems with in metric as far as um, just day-to-day -day function. Um, but my follow-up was I just wanted to see if I could get John's email again. I know he was saying he was could go further on to my earlier questions. I just didn't write it down when he first gave it to me earlier. Yeah, it's john.r.gagnon at main.gov. And G can you spell the last name, the yeah, Gagnon? G-A-G-N-O-N. N-O-N. And then it was at, um, sorry. Main.gov. Main.gov, okay. Yep. And it was john uh, A N, right? John.r, R as in Robert, or R as in whatever the hell John's yeah. middle name is. Rutabaga. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, cool. cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Helena. Kimber. Um, I'm Kimber Duncan. I work at Gela. Um, my question is about metric support. Um, in my experience, whenever I contact metric support, um, usually there is quite a long delay between getting an answer to my solution. Usually we have some sort of situation where we need to transact um, and waiting on metric has delayed us in transacting. Um, so I was wondering if there would be any possible way to maybe filter questions in like in graded by like urgency. Um, I mean, I know everybody's probably figuring that their their question is most important, but should there be like a separation of people asking general navigation questions versus somebody who needs to transact in a half an hour and can't because of a clerical error? No, I, I appreciate that. Uh, one quick uh, clarification question, Kimber. Uh, one of the, uh, res in response to the metric work group uh, sessions, uh, metric had noted that their response times had improved. Um, and 
I'm not here to say that all the problems are solved, um, but have you seen, uh, this is important for me to know, have you seen some improvement in that or is that argument that there has been significant improvement uh, not true in your experience? Um, I mean, I've received a 24 hour turnaround time for general questions, but often it goes longer for anything more complicated if I need to retag something, if there's been a deeper error. And usually their response to me is they're waiting on um, advice from o OCP. So okay. they put it on you guys that they're waiting on your answer. I, I appreciate that. Th uh, thanks for the uh, clarification. I will, um, metric support is something that we have uh, been communicating uh, with them about uh, from the work group session. It's something uh, that we have discussed with them during contract negotiations. It's something that uh, we're all sensitive to. Uh, again, uh, the, the more complicated that that is and the longer it draws out, the more work it is for you and the more work it is for us. And so uh, a solution to better metric support is in all of our interests, absolutely. And so uh, I'll keep pushing um, uh, on this as we move forward and, and make those concerns specific. Perfect. Um, I did have one more question um, about reporting. It appears that there's no way to pull a retroactive report from this system. Um, if I wanted to provide inventory to my accountant, I need to go on the first and pull all those reports on the first of every month throughout the year. So if I miss a date, my inventory is off and there's no way to go like say on December 31st and go pull a report and see something that I had in the system back in like April or May. So I didn't know if there was any way to get around that. I know it's a system limitation, but it is something of a pain point for us. I appreciate that. John? Yeah, those, those moment in time reports can be tricky. There are certain portions in metric where you can mine those, but I do know that there are certain pieces, particularly when it comes to inventory, that getting that snapshot can be challenging. Um, I'm not sure if you've taken uh, a peek at, at our metric report uh, work group where we talked about um, metric trying to integrate with Tableau in the future. I can't make any specific promises about what that might look like. Metric hasn't really shared those details with us. I'm just saying that there might be a glimmer of hope that in the future we might get a little bit more functionality there. Um, but I can say that, you know, even on our side where we've got access to kind of behind the scenes data, it's a challenge for us sometimes to, to get kind of that that historical view of, of things. So I do know exactly what you're what you're describing. And I'm hoping for better days in the future. Um, because yeah, that, that scenario where there could be some improvement, I think. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Also, my apologies if there is background noise on my end, but the toddler in the apartment above me is clearly playing the drums with his parents' pots and pans. Uh, and so I hope you can't hear that, but it's driving me a little bonkers. Uh, otherwise, uh, last call on questions. Kimberly. Hey there, Kimberly Ward, Maine Cannabis Exchange. No, we can't hear your background noise. You're good. Okay. Um, my question touches on the first question of the day that Annie Matney brought up. We are not, we are retail only. So we had a vendor who ran into some similar problems, I've heard, not being able to manifest by quantity. It had to be weight. They have since worked with metric. And for those of you who are in that jam, they were able to write that ship for them, but I know nothing about it. My question is, when I pull up my integration reconciliation report, it actually gets sent to me each day. I have eight items in there that it, we have zero quantity of, but um, metric shows that we have 0 0.0018. And again, that's like Annie Matney said, you know, um, that's where that discrepancy comes from. But I've reached out to Dutchie, who is our POS, and I've reached out to metric. They best response I got from metric was to adjust the quantities in metric. I can't, nor did they go, nor, nor were they descript on how to do that. I don't know that I'm able to do that. So I don't know how to fix our integration reconciliation report. Just jotting the note down, Kimberly. So sure. I have it all. Uh, 
Uh, John, do you have a, a follow up there or is this something we just take directly to metric? Um, I'm happy to follow up on it. Uh, Kimberly, if you want to email me, uh, metric would have given you a support ticket number. Uh, I'm happy to pull uh, the, the support transcript from them on that. If you want to email me that support ticket number, I can um, I can take a look at the history. I mean, they're right. At the end of the day, uh, metrics, a system of record. So we'd want to um, okay. do a package adjustment there. Maybe there's some other variable that that we'd look into to why you wouldn't be able to do that in metric. Uh, but if starting with the support ticket and me pulling the transcript on, that's the way to go. So if you can get that ticket number for me, that would be a big help. Um, that's I, I appreciate that. And that's going to John to R. Gagnon at main.gov. Yeah. Yeah. You can send it to me and I'll I'll see what I can find on that one. Excellent. Again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. No problem. All right. Another last call on questions. Well, hearing none. Um, first off, I wanted to thank all of you uh, for joining today. This has been a really productive session. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot about what your experience is like and what some of the frustrations uh, that you're all facing. Um, I'm happy uh, and eager to continue this conversation moving forward, as I noted at the outset, for those of you who might have joined uh, a little bit late. Uh, we're going to doing we're going to be doing these calls quarterly. Uh, it's going to be pretty much the same format uh, and recognizing that a uh, new concerns might pop up. B, some of the concerns that you expressed today might not get um, fully addressed, and we need to hear that feedback too uh, to continue this conversation uh, with the vendor. Uh, but also, this is a really good opportunity um, to hear from you all as well about uh, the things that we can do and the things that we can help with uh, to make this system uh, more functional. It's certainly a complicated system, um, and it's one that I know uh, Vern and, and his team uh, and John and his team uh, work hard with a lot of you to make sure uh, we get the best results possible. Uh, and so uh, I'm looking forward to uh, following up with metric. As I said, we've got a few pointers on things that we need to uh, put out some clarifying communications on. Uh, and of course, as I noted, uh, as soon as uh, the, the contract negotiation with metric has closed out, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be first in line to be communicating with all of you about the details of it um, and what the system will look like moving forward. Obviously, of course, the timeline, and finally, the reminder, we put out two guidance documents, one on the contract negotiation update uh, and one on a few changes to weights and on waste. Uh, so please check them out on our website if you haven't already gotten them uh, in your email. Uh, so thanks again, everyone. Uh, and we'll see you, uh, well, we'll see you when we see you, but we'll definitely see you in a quarter. Hey, everybody.